Good morning, everyone. March 28th, God never fails. Has his mercy ceased forever? Has his promise failed forevermore? Psalm 77, verse 8. Sir Winston Churchill, the legendary politician and statesman known for his leadership of the United Kingdom during the Second World War, once said, Continuous effort, not strength or intelligence, is the key to unlocking our potential. We can't rest in our victories. Neither can we wallow in our defeats. We all fail. And sometimes our failures can demoralize us. But even in failure, there are benefits to be gained and progress to be made. Some lessons can only be learned in failure. And a day is never lost if a lesson is learned. Failure is often a path to success if we persevere. Basketball great Michael Jordan understood this. He once said, failure always made me try harder next time. As we encounter our ups and downs, it's helpful to remember that God never fails and that his mercy never ceases. As we read in Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 to 23, his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. If your own failure has you questioning God's faithfulness today, place your worries in his hands. He will never fail you, no matter how many times you may fail. Success consists of going from failure to failure without loss of enthusiasm. Winston Churchill So let's look at Psalm 77, 8 for some context. To the choir master, according to J. Duthin, a psalm of Asaph. I cried aloud to God, aloud to God, and he will hear me. In the day of my trouble, I seek the Lord. In the night, my hand is stretched out without wearying. My soul refuses to be comforted. When I remember God, I moan. When I meditate, my spirit faints. Selah. So whenever you guys see Selah, take a breath and really meditate on what you just read. You hold my eyelids open. I am so troubled that I cannot speak. I consider the days of old, the years long ago. I said, let me remember my song in the night. Let me meditate in my heart. Then my spirit made a diligent search. Will the Lord spurn forever and never again be favorable? Has his steadfast love forever ceased? Are his promises at an end for all time? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he in anger shut up his compassion? Selah. This is all rhetorical. Remember, the literary device of rhetorical questions is powerful because these are not the questions of an unbelieving person. These are the questions of a priest, Asaph. These are the questions of someone who believes in God and still wrestles with doubt and he's making a statement. So will the Lord spurn forever and never again be favorable? No, of course not. Has his steadfast love forever ceased? No, his steadfast love has never ceased. Are his promises at an end for all time? No, they are not at an end. Our puny minds only see a small glimpse of this wonderful mosaic that God is creating. The tapestry of space and time is at his fingertips. We are living in one small speck of this time scale, whereas God is eternal. He has no beginning and has no end. And so because he is eternal, because he is faithful forever, we can trust his promises. Has God forgotten to be gracious? No, God has not forgotten to be gracious. He has not in anger shut up his compassion. Then I said, I will appeal to this, to the years of the right hand of the Most High. This is my grief that the right hand of the Most High has changed. <laughs> so here you have a man of God wrestling with God and wrestling with God's consistency because again, he has a puny mind and cannot comprehend why he is suffering, how this suffering can produce good in the end. We don't see the big picture. 
because we are not zoomed out far enough from the space-time continuum to be able to comprehend the grandeur of God's sovereign plot for this universe. I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your wonders of old. I will ponder all your work and meditate on your mighty deeds. Your way, O God, is holy. What God is great like our God? You are the God. Again, another rhetorical question. There is no other God. You are the God who works wonders. You have made known your might among the peoples. You, with your arm, redeemed your people, the children of Jacob and Joseph. Selah. When the waters saw you, O God, when the waters saw you, they were afraid. Indeed, the deep trembled. The clouds poured out water. The skies gave forth thunder. Your arrows flashed on every side. The crash of your thunder was in the whirlwind. Your lightnings lighted up the world. The earth trembled and shook. Your way was through the sea, your path through the great waters, yet your footprints were unseen or unknown. You led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. So Asaph is remembering something that happened hundreds of years ago, maybe even a millennium before he was born. He's talking about God bringing the Israelites out of slavery in Egypt into the promised land. He's remembering the goodness of God. So the moral of the story here, Psalm 77 teaches us that when you're wrestling with God, it's okay. And what you can do about it, instead of wallowing, remember that God never fails. And remember what God has done for you in the past. Remember personal family histories. Remember how good he was to you. And remember that all things work together for your good, for those who are called according to God's purpose and obey his commands. Though we may fail, God never fails. Good evening, everyone. It's March 28th. Today's title is Christ Ministry. I don't know why I was Australian there. Today's title is Christ's Ministry Purpose. God gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting men's sins against them. 2 Corinthians 5 18 and 19. The great separation between God and humankind took place when man, in disobedience, declared himself to be independent of God. He thought that this would liberate him, but in reality he became the slave of influences stronger than himself. The egotistical I replaced God. Love turned into sensuality. Man's declaration of independence from God was disastrous. Subsequent events proved that humankind cannot rule the world in their own wisdom and strength. Even though humanity turned away from God, God did not turn away from his people. The purpose of Christ's coming into this world as a man was to bridge the gaping chasm that separated man from God. Through Christ's ministry, God revealed to us what we can become through his strength. We can be liberated from sin, share in the enriching experience of his spirit living in us, and experience ongoing communion with him. God has not changed. His love is eternal, and those who accept Christ and follow his ways find their relationship with God is fully restored. Take a minute here to meditate on the reality 
of what Christ has accomplished for humanity. That God put on flesh and came to earth, born of a virgin, born in a humble estate of a poverty-stricken family to die for us, the Lamb of God who atones for all of our sins. We put his blood on our doorposts and the angel of death passes over us. 